Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Land Stories Live. I am your host, Dave Denniston of Generation Family Properties, LLC, where our goal is to help hundreds of people just like you own land. Most of all, we would love to tell your land story. Well, today I have the honor of having Christy back with me. Hey, Christy. Hello. Well, I know we're going to talk Hi, about... Ben. I'm I'm good. I'm good. We're uh, we got some more snow here in in Minnesota, and so we got 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 a few inches on the ground. I know you're you're from Texas. Got family in Texas. How's uh, how's everyone doing out there? My family was all very lucky. So because of obviously we get hurt. snowstorms aren't a thing there. Like everybody freaks out when it even flurries. So having a few inches on the ground was catastrophic, but what we are used to is hurricanes. So my parents who actually live on a farm, um, it's not too far out of town. It's like really 10 minutes from actually five minutes from a Walmart. It's not that far out, but it used to be. And they have a whole house generator and a huge propane tank. So I don't think they noticed much. They just <laughs> hung out inside and stayed warm. So they didn't even really lose power because the generator kicked on and they were good to go. That's awesome. My folks live in McKinney, yeah. Texas, which is just north of Dallas. Yeah, and they did lose power. They were out for like two days. And so um, we, we they called me on a cell phone the first day it happened. And of course, didn't hear from them right after a while because no power and... and um, Luckily, nothing bad happened, but they had, um, they didn't have any pipes burst, but they had neighbors whose pipes burst. So thoughts and prayers of people going through that stuff. It's just no fun on top of COVID over the last year. You know? No, it's been rough. It's been rough. And if you can find a plumber, I think you're really lucky. And I think the plumbers in the next few weeks are going to be driving around in Corvettes and Audis and they're going to be like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can retire now. <laughs> They're gonna They've be done a, two to five years worth of work in the next two weeks, I think. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, people are probably going to come from all over the country to do work out there, you the, know? The smart thing to do, for sure. Boy, 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 boy. Well, I'm glad to hear your folks are doing well, and they they had, you know, everything they needed, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, they're planners. <laughs> that's the way to do it. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about one of one of our favorite areas that we've gone back to a number of times, but it's been a while since we've talked about the talked about on the podcast, and that is Otero County, New Mexico, and Timberon. And I figured it'd be fun to tell people about the history of the area and the things you can do out there. And we actually have a whole number of properties available out there. We have, I think, six properties available on our website, and we have another like six that's not on the website. So we're going to try and feature one or two or three or four, however many we have time for in the next 20, 30 minutes. And of course, you can check all of them out at genfamproperties.com. Um, well, Christy, I know you've, um, you've done quite a bit in Timberon over the years. It's been popular yes. on Facebook and, yep. and you've talked with a lot of folks out there. I've never been there. You've never been there, but we certainly talked to enough people that it feels like we have. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I would love to hear from you, just, just general thoughts, and we'll dive into some of the history. Uh, what do you make of this area in, in Timberon, New Mexico? So I think we, we've talked about this a long time ago when we talked about um, these properties. I had no idea New Mexico had mountains and beautiful trees. <laughs> Yeah. Just assumed it was, I've been to Albuquerque. So I just, you know, you just assume it's kind of like people here from Texas and they assume I ride my horse through the cactus. I think it's very <laughs> similar. So it was a real eye opener for me to see how beautiful it is and that it, it snows in New Mexico. And I thought, what? I thought it was just blazing hot. And nope, come to find out there's all kinds of, you know, wildlife, amazing birds, tons of outdoor stuff to do. I had no idea. So that was my first impression of this area was like, what, it's green? Oh, okay, that's a shock. Let's learn more about that. And then, yeah, just, so that was my first. And then of course, as we got more and more and more properties there, started learning more, I just thought, if you like the outdoors, this was an awesome place to go. If you're anywhere in the area and you want a weekend place, awesome. If you're ready to hang it up in the city, awesome. It's well, nice and quiet. Exactly. Well, the, those 
that's really what hit me about it. I saw saw a couple other people that that had property there, and I was like, man, this is nice. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly, we we love affordability. And um, what what I noticed is if you go like further north, things are like ten times more expensive, literally. Mm -hmm for a mm -hmm. similar size property. And this, this little hidden gem just south of Cloudcroft will we'll, um, show that on a map here shortly. Um, but I thought it'd be fun. There's a website where everyone can go and, and check it out called Timberon.org. So Timberon.org, there's lots of cool stuff there. I'm gonna be, be talking about some of the things they have on their website. And what I understand is really, any development has happened just in, in less than a hundred years. You know, this is all like 80 years ago that people, I'm sure there were probably Native Americans that were here at one time. Um, but I guess when, when it started a development, um, there was a judge named Paul Moss and he bought this huge amount of area from the state of New Mexico in 1933. So some guy the state of New Mexico was selling off property and good for him. <laughs> He brought acres and acres and acres and acres of it. And I guess he wanted to farm the land. And second, he was hoping to have shoot like movies here and uh, have people hunt. So um, his son apparently married a former child movie star named Jane Withers. And so they brought a bunch of Hollywood people here. So they had some connections that helped them to do it. He died eventually. And then the land was purchased from the heirs by a uh, guy named Willie Farah from El Paso, which isn't too far away. And Farah is the one who loved airplanes and he started to develop it and he put in an airstrip, which is one of the interesting features about it. There's an airstrip in it. Um, they have a, a link to a YouTube video of the, the airstrip in the 70s. Well, then he sold it in 1969. So again, we're not talking that long ago, really, 50 years ago, to a group of businessmen who formed a company called the North American Land Development. And so they deeded property for parks, a chapel, a school, and subdivided everything. So they started subdividing all kinds of stuff. Um, the post office opened just in 1981. So now we're, we're getting closer and closer, right? Just 30 years ago. Um, as a matter of fact, there was no telephone service really at all until 1981 as well. So 1981 was, was a big year. And there were all sorts of grants and, and things established. And then um, there were some power lines. So there is, there is an electrical co-op called the Otero County Electrical Co-op that ran lines in 1961. But it wasn't until everything started being developed in the late 60s that more power kind of went through. So it's um, a relatively new area and um, subdivided. And so that's why we can find these half acre properties, one acre properties, two acre properties. We know a lot of our, our people love large lots. Um, but I think what's, what's unique to me about this area, Christy, is that there's quite a few properties, lots of properties that have power, that have yeah. water, that, that have utilities. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, any thoughts from you, just, you know, as you're talking to people all across the country in, in properties, Colorado and New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, you know, what, what makes this unique? I think the water is pretty unique, especially in New Mexico, that you don't have to drill a well, because as you know, it be, could, can be quite deep. So to have water lines already there is, is huge. Mm -hmm. Even if you're only gonna build a weekend cabin, it's I think $675 to hook into the water line. And that's gonna be significantly cheaper than drilling a well and then maintaining a well. And then you have to have electricity to you know pump the well. And so just having that water is huge. Even if you think, oh, I'm only gonna go up there every, two months, it doesn't matter. Oh, I bet if you have that spigot, you can just quickly get water, you'll be pretty happy. <laughs> it's, it's a huge bonus. It is, it is. And I think it, it makes the, the small, relatively smaller lots. I mean, heck, you know, I, I probably live on a quarter acre lot or less. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's bigger than anything I already got. Um, yeah. so, so an acre, two acres is not unusual. 
Um, the one thing I would tell folks about this area that you need to be aware of, New Mexico specifically has a state law around septics. And so you can, in, in this whole area, install septic, but there's like alternative systems if you have under three quarters of an acre. So a lot of people think, oh, you can't do it. Well, you can. You can install septic. It's just you have to follow the state of New Mexico guidelines. I know you ran into this, Christy. Any, any thoughts on your end? Yeah, it's just there's different kinds. So you just have to research, obviously, what's allowed and then what would work best for you. If you can live there full time, you might want something different than if it's a weekend house. But there are solutions. So you just have to figure out which one would work best for you and then obviously be within the law. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, not, not only um, do you have that airstrip that I mentioned, which just recently, as of December 2020, it has opened to public pilots. It had been a private use airport, but now it's open to public pilots. So that's awesome. That's just yeah. a brand new change. We've been, yeah. we've been buying and selling land there. Um, they have a community swimming pool, which is closed right now with COVID, mm -hmm. but um, normally it's only open Memorial Day through Labor Day anyhow. So um, there, there is a pool there for the community, uh, which I know a lot of people love to come to cool off here. So hang out at the pool, hopefully this summer. Uh, they do have a golf course. They have uh, water aerobics classes at the pool too. So oh, just do they? Do to stay in shape. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, and I saw it was like three days a week and it's like 35 bucks a month. I was like, that's pretty good. So that's awesome. Cheaper than, yeah. than the YMCA. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and they do have a golf course there too. Nine hole golf course. So it's not 18 holes. It is nine. Um, and you are up at 7,000 feet. So you might be able to hit that ball a little farther than normal up at that elevation. Um, oh, but rent a golf cart. Huh? Don't walk unless you're used to the altitude. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, anything else to know? Um, I thought this was an interesting thing that you can grow fruit in Timberon, apparently apple trees, cherry trees, pear trees, peach trees, plum trees all grow and bear fruit in Timberon. Um, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. So like you said earlier, this isn't the desert. You can grow stuff. Yeah. On that same uh, website at timberon.org, when it's talking about just above that, I noticed it was talking about the permaculture which I've kind of gotten into that on YouTube. I've gone down that rabbit hole on YouTube and watched about permaculture farms and I'm fascinated by it. And there's a book you can buy about permaculture in that area, what grows, how to grow it, how to set it up. So if that's something that somebody's wanting to do, after all of this hecticness in this last year and the city's going crazy and Texas getting snow and not having food and you think, I kind of want to grow my own, you can do it here. And they like, you know, list it out for you, what you need to do, exactly what you said, what grows, how to grow it, what time of year to grow it. Like a, what, what is the book called? Um, Permaculture for Dummies, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Permaculture. So all about growing stuff. So that sounds like yeah. a great resource. Um, and you can hunt here. There you yeah. are near, near BLM land. As a matter of fact, some properties border BLM land. We had one, I don't remember if it's sold or not yet, but we actually have one that borders BLM land. Not every property does, but some do. And certainly if you don't have a property that borders BLM land, you, you can buy one not too far away from it, um, which I know there's mule deer, elk, wild turkey, and, and other stuff out there. Um, now, of course, you can't hunt in the residential areas, right? This is just BLM land. That, um, that you can do it. So be careful, um, but but you can do it out there. Um, have you heard from anyone that's hunted out there, Christy, at all? I have not. I know that when we first got these properties, and I remember posting on Facebook, and everybody went crazy, and they would sell within an hour. Most of the people that I would chat with said, I used to go hunting up there as a kid, or I go hunting up there on the weekends, and I've always wanted a place. So I haven't talked specifically to people that have gone hunting since they've bought the property, but I know a lot of people bought it because they know the area is good for hunting. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I read, um, I'm going to link in the show notes, which will eventually be on the website. Um, there's a, there's a whole document that's 10 pages long about hunting, which references the Sacramento mountain area, which is where, um, this particular, um, area is. So, um, 
definitely check out that document when when we have a chance. Well, let me. Um, I am going to pull up a Google Map to show everybody where one of our properties are is. And while you're pulling that up, I'll kind of keep talking about some of the other stuff. So yeah. there's ATV trails all throughout Tiburon. There's two fishing lakes. There's one that's right near the golf course. And apparently there's just amazing views of the mountains from there. And then there's another smaller fishing lake behind the lodge and both are stocked. And so another good website was timberonwater.com. And that had a bunch of information on the lakes, which was really good. Um, there's a general store in Timberon. So if you need groceries, you can do that. Um, there were webcam setups. So there's two webcams. So you can kind of go check it out live if you want to see what it actually looks like. Um, so that was kind of cool. And then within that airport, there's also a restaurant and like a little bar and grill. Uh, I'm sorry, not the airport, the golf course. So there's a pro shop and then above it, there's a little restaurant bar or grill. So it's a nice little community and they have uh, 4th of July parades. They have their own EMS and fire department. So it's, it's pretty cool. That's great. No, it's, yeah. you're, you're right on. Um, I'm, I'm on a Google map now just to give everyone kind of an idea. You can almost see where it ends, right? You know, you can see all of these roads in here. So about right here <laughs> is where, is where uh, their Timberon isn't. Um, and then over here and over here where you get into the mountains. So you can see it's this big area. I'll scroll out a little bit further just so we can better, better see. So you can see all of this beautiful green forest all over the place here. And then not too far away, right? You got got desert. So as we mm. scroll out a little further, there's White Sands, New Mexico, over there. Alamo Gordo, Cloudcroft. Apparently, the kids go to school in Cloudcroft. So yes, if you wanted to live here full time, it is a little bit of a commute to get to school, at least at this point. But it is possible. Um, you certainly mm -hmm. can. And Dave, where is the BLM land in relation to Timberon? It okay. is, we actually have a property. Um, so this edge right here, this is national forest okay. all over here. And I believe over here too. Okay. And obviously more over here, there's more and more national forest. You can see where it's this deep green, right? You know, there's mm -hmm. lots of, that's all yeah. the Lincoln National Forest. You can see it goes this whole uh, amount from Cloudcroft all the way down to Timberon. So this is the southern end of the Lincoln National Forest. Beautiful. You can see this whole range goes up, which, like I said before, if you look for a property in Cloudcroft, it's so expensive, mm -hmm. so expensive, just a little further north. Um, outside of that, you know, in terms of where people might come from, Roswell, you can see the aliens, <laughs> out here in Roswell, uh, Carlsbad. You can see there's El Paso, which we know all these areas get super hot, mm. super hot over the summer. So great place to escape to, you know, if you live in any any of these areas. A um, little further out, you can see there's Albuquerque up here. So you're you're um, fairly in the middle of nowhere, as we like to say, you know, you're, you're not near a major metropolitan area, but you're not too far away either. You know, if we do a, a measurement here, you're about 70 miles as the crow flies to El Paso. So, you know, you're an hour and a half away mm -hmm. from, from uh, civilization. So great for someone that wants a cabin um, or, or wants a, a place where they can hang out and cool down over the summer. I'm gonna change this to a 3D view just to help people better understand the topography. You can see how hilly it is as we go around. And this is kind of a valley um, in the topography where, where um, it is. There are some flood zones where there's not houses generally. The flood zone actually goes through by the airport here. So mm -hmm. as, as we look at the 3D view, you can see the airport's kind of the lowest spot. Um, some spots are up higher. You can see the property that, that we have um, for sale here where we've marked, it's a little higher of a property. So you can have some gorgeous views of, of down lower when you're up a little higher. Um, yeah. Some properties are more mountainous than others, more hilly than others. Um, 
Anything you want me to zoom in on here, Christy? No, it's, I've never, I don't ever use this 3D view. I should, that's really cool. So it gives you an idea of um, yeah. some of the topography, at least you can see the property we have over here. You can see it's kind of on top of the hill as, as you get an idea of, of what the views might look like. You can see there's a little bit of a decline, but it's not like the side of a mountain kind mm -hmm. of um, kind of a, a view, which some properties do, to be fair. You can see here, this property is probably pretty steep yeah. going into a little bit of a goalie. So you do have to be careful with the, the properties that, that you can buy because lots of stuff got subdivided. Some of it's better, better than others. Yeah, and if you want to build, you want to make sure you don't have to do a ton of groundwork. Yes, and the good news is um, you could try and buy up a couple of properties around you. We've had some success with doing that. Um, one thing I would say in general in this area, if you see houses around, like you can see on this property here on Log House, hey, house, 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 house. So there's several houses around, house over here, house over there. More than likely, that means that there is water and power. More than likely. If we scroll in enough, you can see here faintly, this is a power line. It's really hard to see. It almost looks like a crease in it. Um, so there, there's a power line that runs behind. Sometimes the power lines are underground, so you may not see them. Other times they're above ground here. So it can be a little hard to tell, but I generally look to see, hey, are there houses around the property? And that's a good indication for it. Um, water, only 650 bucks to hook into it. Yep. We've had places that it's like a $7,000 tap fee. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> not here. It's 650 bucks. Very let's, reasonable. Let's uh let's look a little bit more at this property just to give folks an idea. So this is the one we were just looking at. Um, some of these we have original photos of. Some of these we don't. You can see there's that power line I was talking about. This is original photos of this property. You can see trees all around. Some are probably in better condition than others. Um, before this was done, I think there hadn't been snow in a while, but I guess there's been snow the last few weeks now, <laughs> as many oh, of us know. Um, I'm looking here. I think all but one of the properties has original photos or actual photos of the property. It looks like just one of them has general photos. Okay, good, good. I love it. Um, anything about this particular property you want to draw out, Christy? I was, I'm not even sure which one you're on, to be honest. This is uh, the one ending 8040. Yeah, so that one is one of the ones that has both power and water for sure. Yes. So I did mark all of those to make sure we knew which ones. So we actually have three of the six. We have three with power and water. We have one with no power but water, and we have two with neither that are off grid. Perfect. And you can see some some are more treed than others. Like this one, you can see. Uh, would be pretty easy to build on in that you don't have to clear a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, um, others you do. It just kind of de depends on on the property. Um, if we notice this one was about a half acre. And mm -hmm. so these half acre ones, usually uh, very low property tax. As you can see this one's like a few bucks a month, super yeah, cheap. <laughs> uh, we're looking for 500 down and um, $6,000 if you're doing owner financing or 5,000, if you're doing cash, only 149 a month. So very affordable. Uh, here's another one. This is um, two parcels. So we own some side by side in this case. Mm -hmm. You can see this one, there's not a lot of houses in the area, uh, but as a matter of fact, it does have water. Yes, that's the one that has no power, but does have the water. Obviously, property taxes in this one a little more expensive. Uh, again, this is two different lots that we own. So it's an acre rather than a half acre, you get a whole acre. So if, if you're concerned about the alternative septic, there you go. Uh, let's see. If we look at the difference between um, the two, so here's that BLM land. You're not too far away from it here. So you get this one's a, uh, further on the outskirts. You're not as close to town, which might be good for some people, um, depending upon what you want to do. Um, anything more to add about this one acre one, Christy? 
No, that's our only one acre one that we have. All the rest are half acres. So that's the only side by side that we have for right now. Yes, exactly. Now this one is um, one, you notice it's a little cheaper. So it is... Um, the dogs aren't included. <laughs> dogs not included. You can see the taxes are crazy cheap on this one. Less than a dollar a month for um, <laughs> property taxes. But you notice there is no um, water to this lot. And so we are selling it, of course, for cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. So it's only um, 3000 bucks. So you save $1,000 on this property, um, which who knows, in the future, they could expand um, the water out there. Sure. If you take a look at this one, you can see, hey, there's still a dirt road going to it. So you got access there. You can see it's kind of up a little higher versus some of the, the other ones you can just see in the topography, right? You know, it's it's up mm -hmm. up a little higher, a little different. Um, airports over here. So this one's a little further north. I think we were just looking at the last one. It's not too far away from one another, actually. So yeah, if they're not too far away and that the one does have water and the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. It is a possibility that it would extend at some point in the future. Definitely a possibility. Uh, and then we have this other one that um, it's a little different. You can see there's kind of some different trees. It has a few more shrubs on it. Then um, the other one you can see again here, there's house, 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 house all over the place around it. So yeah. guess what? It probably has water. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got water Oops. on it. <laughs> you got water on it. Um, and there's more than likely electricity probably too, particularly, you know, you see houses all over the place here, so. Um, it did say down there that it's, there is electric on Savola Drive. There you go. Yeah. Um, and if we scroll out here a little bit, you can see this is on the complete opposite side of the um, development. So this is on the far west side. The other ones we're looking at are further east. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, the closer in you go over here, you're going to have more utilities are going to be more expensive. Here's the golf course we were talking about. And some of the, I think some of the fishing spots are here, Christy, if I remember right. Yeah, one of the lakes for sure they said was right by. And then that looks like there's a few, but some might be just water catchment. I'm not sure. I think so. So th these are more expensive, of course, here on the golf course too. So yeah. the prices can vary from place place to place. And of course, the cheaper we can buy it at, the, the cheaper we can sell it. Um, generally, we haven't had as much luck here. Generally, we've been more on the the outskirts of town, but every so often they pop up. No. Um, I can't think of really anything else to say about the area. We've covered a lot with these yeah. different properties. It's an awesome area. If you like outside, awesome place to be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people aren't aware of it, which is why we do these podcasts to make you exactly. aware of of what yeah, we have. You would think it would have all of that in such a small area, but it does. And we um, we have new property, we have properties that are even on the website. So if you're interested in the area, you can contact Christy and she can walk you through it. Cause I think we have another six or seven properties that aren't even on our website yet. And hopefully we'll have some more coming. So even if you're not ready yet, hey, contact us and, and Christy can tell you all about it. Any um, Any final thoughts, Christy? Yeah, it looks like we've got six more coming once we get some more info. So we'll have lots. Yeah, so if you want something, let us know kind of your wish list and we can pick through and narrow it down and give you some choices on what might work. If you want to be out of the middle of nowhere, no power, no water, we can do that. If you want to have it all, we can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And if people are interested, where can they contact you? Um, call me or text me and that number is 971 two four eight six seven one five or then you can always email to and that's sales at genfamland.com all right everybody well, i think that wraps up the episode for today poor christy's phone is getting blown up so i'm sure we got to get going <laughs> ding, 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 ding. i keep if you, anybody's gonna be looking over that's why it's because the, the google voice is going ding 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 <laughs> <laughs> so 
So if you have questions, hit up Christy. Um, we, we certainly try and do a couple of these episodes a month. And if you have suggestions or questions, we would love to hear from you. You can send it to, to Christy at sales at genfamland.com or submit it right here through Facebook. Thank you yeah, so much. I'd love to know what you guys want to hear us talk about. Yes. Yes. If you have guest suggestions, we welcome those too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning into Land Stories with me, your host, Dave Denniston. Make sure to check out all of our properties at www.genfampropertiescom And if you are looking for land, whether it's in this area or a different one, I know Christy would love to speak with you. She's awesome. And if you want to call her directly, Christy, what's that phone number one more time? 971. 2486715. All right, there we go, everybody. Have a good one. Bye bye.